Okay, guys, stop me if you've heard this before, but Shawn Michaels hit another 100-dime play yesterday. I'm sitting at home. I'm watching the Eagles-Arizona game on TV. I happen to flip over to the NFL Network. I go to the Red Zone channel, and the minute I turn it on, I see Donald Brown scoring the winning touchdown for the Colts to give Sean the cover. And people often ask me, well, who's your favorite play on a particular day? Well, my favorite play, of course, is always my best bet. But at that time of the day, my game hadn't even started yet. That was on San Francisco against St. Louis. So my favorite play yesterday was the play that was the biggest one on the board in terms of the handicappers here with the hottest handicapper. Why? Because I knew more of you guys out there were on Shawn Michaels' play on Indianapolis than any other handicapper here at the site. So trust me. I probably liked the Colts yesterday or was cheering for the Colts more than for my hometown team, the Eagles, more than for my own 15 dime best bet winner on the 49ers, and they did it again. I mean, it has been a phenomenal run. And listen, guys, you know, I built these sites 10, 11 years ago, so there have been some phenomenal runs over the years. Uh, and Shawn Michaels has had one of them as well. You know, when he came back to this site after a couple year absence, now we're talking like five or six years ago, he hit his four, first 14 plays in baseball. But look at this run that he is on right now. After the 100 dime winner on the Colts yesterday, that puts him in position of going for winning day number 65 out of 95 today. And with those 100 dime max wager plays in football uh, over the past three weeks, 15 wins, two losses, and a push. And really, it's 16 and 2, as I've noted repeatedly, because a couple of Sundays ago, you know, we counted, he and I, because we were both on the Saints against San Francisco that day, counted New Orleans win as a push rather than a win, just because for bookkeeping uh, purposes here at the site, we couldn't be sure 100% of you out there got the win by buying that half point against San Fran. So, 15 2 and 1 with 100 dime max wager releases the past three weeks. And tonight, not only winning day number 65 out of 95, but 100 dime NFC supremacy showdown of the year, your Saints Seahawks side. Understand he is 42 and 17 with 100 dime NFL releases the past four plus seasons. Not only cashing with the Colts yesterday, but also on Thanksgiving Day with yet another teaser winner with Detroit and Dallas. This play just as strong as his 9-1 and one run with college football side selections this year, of which he just got his Pac-12 lock of the year with Arizona State over Arizona with ease and a 26-point cover on Saturday night. Just as strong as his 100-dime college total of the year winner, part number two that you got on Saturday. Nope, that was Friday. Houston and SMU over by 29 points. Bottom line is, you know, Sean is not an everyday handicapper, but over the past six months, he's had a total of 96 plays. 64 wins, 30 losses, and two pushes. And those plays have made a $10 better over $23,000. So that's what Shawn Michaels has going for him tonight, another under dime release. Now also, quick congratulations going out to Craig Davis, and you'll understand why I'm talking about Craig now in just a moment. Craig yesterday, Biggest release of the season, 100 dime winner, number 21 out of 34, two-team teaser winner on Carolina and New England. Uh, a $10 better in the NFL over the past couple of years has won a little over $9,300 from a guy who used to be president of FantasyFootball.com. This is a guy, of course, who, you know, football is his specialty. But as you know, here at the site, he has excelled in all sports over the past seven years that he's been a member of this site. Uh, today, his second biggest release of the season, 75 dime Monday night game of the year. This play matches his fifth straight Super Bowl winner, the 75 dime play you got on the Ravens last February, okay? Now, the reason I'm telling you about Craig now is I want to point out something. Sean's on one side, Craig is on the other. So if you have bought one of the guy's plays, you know the other side. If you already have a Craig Davis package, you know who Sean is on. Listen, guys, I'm here to also save you money, okay? That's the bottom line. So anytime I can pass on tips like this to you, I want to. But again, they are on opposite sides of the fence this evening. Listen, guys, you want to save $21 off a single purchase today? You can use them on Sean, Craig, anybody you want. Save 21 is the coupon code, S-A-V-E, and the number 21, that is the coupon code. In just a minute, I'm going to break down your total for tonight's game between the Saints and the Seahawks and also give you a free college basketball selection on UConn and Florida. Uh, another handicapper I want to talk about today is going to be Brad Wilton with 60 dime winner, number 36 out of 51, and his seventh straight total winner it's a 60 dime play on the Saints Seattle over under. Save $80 on a seventh straight total winner. 
by using coupon code BRAD80, B-R-A-D, and the number 80, put it all together. Of course, you just got a 69 winner on Michigan State and Minnesota under by like 23 points or something on Saturday is Big Ten total of the year. You got that winner for $14.95. Thanksgiving Day, you got a 69 NFC North total of the year with the Packers Lions going over. You got that winner for nine bucks. Remember two Fridays ago, Navy and San Jose State uh, went over by a couple of hundred points. Uh, you got that 60 dime winner for $9.95. You got his uh, 60 dime Conference USA total of the year a couple of Thursdays ago with UAB and Rice going over. You got that one for $5. Seventh straight total winner save $80 Brad 80 is the coupon code and finally the $5 play of the day turning to Matt Rivers today third NBA play of the season the each of the last two have come each of the past two Mondays and he's won them both and you've gotten them both as $5 play of the day releases today it's another 400,000 star play a second biggest play 400,000 star winner number 22 out of 34 and five out of six overall the past two weeks his third NBA release of the season. It's on Chicago, New Orleans. You get it as the $5 play of the day and save $65 in the process with the regular purchase price. Matt 5, M-A-T-T -T and the number 5. And again, he's hit two straight $5 play of the day selections. Golden State over Utah two Mondays ago. And last week, Detroit hammering Milwaukee. And they've both been on Monday night. You've gotten them both for $5 and you can get a third one tonight for the same price. Let's see. Is there anything else I have to tell you about? Oh, well, me. I hit 15 dime play, which as you know, 99% of my plays are rated between 5 and 15 dimes. So it's right there at the top of the heap yesterday with the 49ers. A solid, not a spectacular win, but a solid win and cover, and that's all that matters. They don't give you a discount when you go cash in your ticket and say, oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't a spectacular win. We're only going to pay you 75% of your winnings. Doesn't work that way. Uh, and it was football winner, uh, you know, another football winner, which puts me in position tonight. Go for football winner number 10 out of 12 overall. Uh, your St. Seattle offside and five dime winner number five in a row and winning day number 12 out of 15, yada, yada, yada. You can figure out the rest. It's on the page. A um, couple of losers to mention yesterday. Uh, Jeff Fenton was going for 75 dime winner number 22 out of 32. He failed with the Rams and 49ers not going over the total. And Brett Atkins, who hit the big 75 dime total winner in college football on Saturday, failed with his 100 dime NFL winner number four out of five yesterday with the Colts Titans coming nowhere close to going over the total. Jesus. Every time I, you know, got a score update in that game, I'm looking on my phone while I'm watching the Eagles game yesterday and I'm going, doesn't anybody want to do like, you know, score a touchdown for Indianapolis in this game? I mean, every second was Anna Terry, another field goal, five field goals. That's why Sean needed that late touchdown by Donald Brown in order to get the uh, cover in that contest yesterday. Okay, guys, let's talk about tonight's game. Uh, you've got a total that's sitting between 47 and 48 in, uh, points. Uh, you've got uh, the Seattle weather being, well, typically Seattle weather for this time of year. Uh, it's cold. It's going to rain probably. You may have some wet snow mixed in. You got a dome team playing outside at one of the most difficult places to play, Century Link Field. But here's the thing. You've got two teams that have excelled defensively this season. I mean, listen, no doubt about it. Rob Ryan has done a great job in turning around the Saints' defense this season, okay? Uh, defense, number five in the league in scoring defense, giving up just 17.8 points a game. Compared to 28.5 points a game last year they yielded, that ain't too bad. And they're also tied for the league lead in sacks entering this week's action with a total of 37. On the other hand, you've got a Seattle team that has been dynamite here defensively, giving up 16.3 points per game defensively, 16 interceptions as well, uh, also 33 sacks on the year. So you've got two teams that are playing strong defensively. You've got two teams that lately have been running the ball, in the latter case, talking about the Saints, and one that has been running the ball successfully the past couple of years in Seattle with Marshawn Lynch, of course, leading the charge for a, a very strong ground game. But here's the thing. The Saints have really been turning to the run here lately, and Pierre Thomas has been delivering for them. And listen, the Saints aren't dummies. They know that they've got to be able to run the ball here successfully tonight in order to get in this game and in order to win this game. So I think you're going to see both teams obviously come out and try to establish the run. Sure, it's going to be tempting for Drew Brees, and I think everybody realizes that, you know, Seattle's without its starting cornerback. Um, what is his name? Um, Browner. Brown, I can't remember his first name, and his backup, Thurman. So, you know, they are without those two cornerbacks, and the Saints have all those offensive weapons. But let's just remember, you know, it's not like the Seattle Seahawks are totally lost with talent or, you know, left with no talent in that secondary. They still got Earl Thomas. They got still got Richard Sherman. So, okay, they're without Brandon Browner and without his backup, Walter Thurman, but they're still strong there. Again, 
I think because of the weather. I think because of the Saints are going to want to run the ball. I think because Seattle isn't that dynamic offensively, especially without Percy Harfin. This guy only played, what, half a game? two weeks ago, but you had a guy that obviously had an impact, and you have seen repeatedly this season how Seattle's defense or offense has struggled. Plus, you got two teams that are coming off a little bit of a rest situation. Seattle coming off a bye. You've got the Saints having a couple of extra days rest because they played uh, two Thursdays ago at Atlanta, and you just have such a, a game of such magnitude. A 10-1 and team against a 9-2 and team with so much at stake in terms of home field, playoff implications, etc. I think you have two teams that don't come out and light up the scoreboard. So I like the under in the contest. Now in college basketball tonight, uh, Connecticut was a five-point favorite yesterday. I see they're down to four now here this morning. I'm going to go with UConn at home against Florida. Uh, Huskies 7-0 start, uh, biggest wins. Well, you know, they scored one-point wins against Maryland and Indiana, beat Boston College by two points, so they haven't exactly blown out everybody. Uh, as for uh, the Gators, they're coming off a 67-66 to win at home against Florida State on Friday. That's definitely their biggest win of the season. Earlier this year, they lost to Wisconsin in their uh, first road game of the season, 59-53. Now, the good news for the Gators uh, is that their starting point guard is playing his third game back since missing the start of the season. And, of course, that's going to be very important. Uh, Gators are a better rebounding team. A lot of people put a lot of stock in the fact that the Gators beat Florida State uh, last Friday night. But, you know, I don't because, uh, yeah, Florida State had four starters back. But, Jesus, last year they were only an 18-16 and 16 team and a 500 team in the ACC. So it's not like Florida was, you know, beating a top-10 team. On the other hand, you know, UConn uh, nipped Indiana, nipped a good Maryland team, nipped a better than average Boston College team. Um, Florida is a better team on the boards, but listen, the home court advantage has everything to do with my picking around Connecticut tonight. This is not being played at the XL Center. This is being played uh, on their home uh, in their home gymnasium on uh, campus tonight. Uh, they have won like uh, 40 straight non-conference home games. Uh, over the years uh, at this uh, place. So I'm going to go with them in here tonight. I'm going to take UConn, even though Florida is probably going to beat them up on the boards. I think UConn is the better shooting team. And obviously the home court advantage has everything to do with it. So I'm going to go with Connecticut. Minus the points is your free basketball selection. That'll do it, guys. Best of luck to you all. And I will catch you again on Tuesday when we do this once more.